Hi, and welcome to this free-for-all Friday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. Great to have you in the conversation today. We've got a lot we are going to get to in the program. Uh, today we'll be talking to Jeff Withrow of Freedom Works at the top of the next hour. He's going to break down for us. Freedom Works has been working on this uh, Obamacare issue from the very beginning. So they're obviously very happy with what's happened today. They were one of the Tea Party type groups that worked to get Obamacare defunded. So they were a key part, uh, as you were, in getting the results that we got today. All the Republicans sticking together. Two Democrats, we'll talk about them in a minute. Two Democrats, or later in this hour, two Democrats also voted to defund Obamacare today. And that's because they've got primary challenges or election challenges from Republicans. So they know that their constituents are looking at this, that they know that Obamacare is unpopular with the American people. The American people don't want it. We got more and more trouble with that program. I'll go over what some of that is as the program develops. All the glitches and hitches now that are just coming out here. We're less than two weeks before the rollout, and we got one problem after another with Obamacare. Home Depot just told 20,000 of their employees, see you later, sayonara, you're out of here. No health insurance through Home Depot because the program that we'd like to offer you and would if we could is going to be illegal as of January 1. So they just dumped them. They just dumped them, said you're, you're complete now entirely on your own. Just one of many examples. So we'll get into all that as the program uh, develops. Jeff played you some of the sound bites from Boehner and Pelosi at the top of the program just to kind of tease you with what's coming. Boehner, of course, happy. Nancy Pelosi, not so much. So we'll get into that as the program develops. Now, just before we turn our attention to the word, I want to mention a really encouraging story from the New York Giants there is a defensive back by a cornerback by the name of Prince Amukamara. I think that's how you say his name. I've never heard it said. Uh, but he is the black Tim Tebow. He is a devout Christian. He's a Roman Catholic. He's a devout Christian. He is going to remain abstinent until marriage. He's got an absolutely beautiful fiance. They're going to get married. They're going to stay abstinent until they get married. He doesn't drink. He doesn't see a moral problem with drinking. It's not that drinking itself is bad, but he sees where drinking can take you if it's out of control. He says, I'm not going to deal with it. I don't do drugs, all that kind of stuff. And the interesting thing is the way his teammates have come out to support him. Uh, they are supporting the black Tim Tebow. Uh, here is cornerback J. Ron Hosley. He said... Um, He's doing it for a reason, for something that he believes in, that he feels is right for him. I respect that. Now, the way he got attention this last week, he told Muscle and Fitness Magazine he doesn't drink, hasn't had sex, and uh, Hosley said there's more guys out there like that than you think. Negative publicity seems to get the headlines, but there's a lot of good guys out there doing a lot of great things. So that's Prince Amukamara, the black Tim Tebow. Great news to see that out there. Now, before we go to prayer, I'm going to not spend a lot of time detailing specifics from the passage of Scripture today because it's incorporated in the prayer, and I want to get to the prayer. It's a little longer than usual. I want to get to the prayer a little bit earlier than we typically try to do. But this is Solomon's prayer of dedication for the temple. Now, what Solomon did, he has the assembly of, of the nation gathered there together, he knelt on his knees in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands toward heaven. And so this is an extended prayer. Here is the king, the political leader of his people, praying this extended prayer, dedicating the temple to God, asking for God to hear his prayers and the prayers of his people. And that's one of the things that we are going to ask for in our prayer today, that God would raise up political leaders like this, political leaders who will intercede for this people and for this land. You know, one of the prayers that I used when I was a chaplain in the Idaho State Senate, I used a prayer one day that George Washington, as the president, had written for this country. And I prayed that prayer uh, in the presence there of the Idaho State Senate. So we need political leaders like that, like a George Washington. FDR prayed himself on national radio D-Day, June 6, 1944. He didn't delegate that. He didn't have some chaplain do it. He himself wrote the prayer, and he himself prayed that prayer on national radio on June 6, 1944. Now, we've gotten away from that, uh, but we need, and that's what we want to ask God for in our prayer, is for God to raise up political leaders like this who will intercede 
for their people and for this land. Now, Solomon goes through a whole number of things, and the proper response to every one of these issues is prayer. If a man sins against his neighbor, then the neighbor's to pray about that and ask God to hear and bring a verdict of guilty on the wrongdoer and a verdict of acquittal for the one who was innocent. If they are defeated in war, the proper response is prayer. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain, the proper response is prayer. When there is famine in the land, or pestilence, or blight, or mildew, or locust, or caterpillar, if our enemies besiege us, the proper response is prayer. If there is a personal affliction, personal sickness, the response is prayer. When the foreigners come to our land, immigrants come from far countries to our shores, their proper response when they come to this land is to pray. When we go out to battle against our enemies, the proper response is uh, prayer. And when we sin against God, the proper response is prayer. So the response from the people of God for every circumstance is prayer. Well, let's exercise a little bit of that together today. Lord God Almighty, together we confess that there is no God like you in heaven or on earth. And the heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. You keep your covenant of steadfast love with your servants who walk before you with all your heart. With your mouth you speak, and with your hand you fulfill. I pray for myself and for my wife and family, for the listening audience of Focal Point and AFR Talk, for President Obama, all of our elected officials, for every man, woman, and child in the United States. And I pray that from your dwelling place in heaven, you will give attention to our prayers and our pleas for mercy. May your eyes be open day and night to hear our prayers. And when you hear, please forgive May we be clothed with your salvation and rejoice in your goodness. We pray that there will be justice in our city and nation, that in every courtroom you will judge between our citizens by repaying the guilty, by bringing down on his own head what he has done, and by vindicating the innocent and the righteous by rewarding each one according to his innocence. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because of our sin, or disaster or disease come, or enemies attack us in our cities, prompt us as a people to confess your name and turn from our sin. Please hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants and grant rain upon the land you have given to us. Lord, there are many among us who are suffering from our own afflictions and sicknesses and are experiencing sorrow. Whatever prayer or plea we make when we stretch out our hands toward you, I pray that you will hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive. I pray that you will render to each of us according to all our ways, for you and you only know the hearts of the children of mankind. Teach us the right way to live so that we may fear you and walk in your ways all the days that we live. When the enemies of our nation besiege us and attack us, I pray that you will hear our prayer and our plea and maintain our cause. When we suffer defeat at the hands of our enemies because we have sinned against you and have acted perversely and wickedly, may we turn our hearts toward you, acknowledge your name, and pray and plead with you. I pray that we will repent with all our mind and all our heart. Please hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people. Amen.